It's great that we have a running application, but we know that any application needs good tests to ensure it won't break with new development. In our synchronous applications, we had used unit test, but for asynchronous applications, I found that PyTest is a better fit. PyTest also has an async library that will allow us to test our code better. So let's begin by adding those libraries to the application. So just to Okay, with that out of the way, let's see how PyTest works. The PyTest library works in a modular fashion using reusable functions called fixtures. Fixtures allow you to put the repetitive stuff in one function and then add them to the tests that need them. The cool thing about these fixtures is that they can be used in a layered format, allowing you to build very complex foundations. Unfortunately, this is also PyTest's Akil Hill, as some teams make such complex fixture onions that will make any newcomer spend lots of time to learn them. My recommendation is to always make tests as readable as possible. So avoid doing more than three layers of fixtures and keep them as single purpose as possible with very descriptive names. These fixtures can live in the same test files that use them, or you can put them in a special file called comtest. Any comtest fixtures on a parent directory are available to the tests in the child directories. You'll get the hang of it as you start building your tests. The other difference with unit test is that PyTest doesn't require classes, although they can still be used. To follow Poetry's directory structure recommendations, we'll create a tests folder on the root level where the conf test and all the tests will live. Then create an initpy empty file inside the tests folder to make sure it's recognized as a Python module. Create the conf test file inside the test folder and let's start working on it. First, we'll add the necessary imports we'll use. Make sure to place the load.env command before the create app factory instantiation so that the environment variables are set. We still now create the database instantiation fixture for all our tests. So let's write that. By default, all PyTest fixtures are function level, which means that PyTest will create the database from scratch at the beginning of the function and destroy it at the end of the function. This works well for testing purposes, since each test function will work on isolation. For more complex applications, we can leverage fixtures to preload data for some of the tests but we'll see examples of that later on. We then load the credentials from the .m file. We then connect to the database and create the test database, which will be called the same as our application database with the string underscore test appended. We also want to drop the database by default if it exists. This will let us handle interrupted test runs. Finally, we will create all the tables from the models in the application using the SQL Alchemy metadata property. Now here's something you will see often with PyTest fixtures and that's the use of the yield statement. We're going to yield the application settings to the next test or fixture that includes it. Essentially what yield does is to send the control back to the calling test and you can define what data you want to share with it here. Once the test is completed, the rest of the commands below the yield are executed. So we will write the database cleanup commands in here which in our case includes destroying the database. Next, let's create the Quart application itself. This is also a functions code fixture 
and we will inject the CreateDB fixture to it as a dependency. That's right, you can inject fixtures in other fixtures. But again, remember to limit the number of fixture layers to keep your tests manageable, like I mentioned earlier. By including CreateDB as a parent fixture to create test app, we won't need to call CreateDB in our tests. We just include create test app, which in turn guarantees it calls the CreateDB fixture and runs it. Inside the fixture, we create an instance of the factory create app function and then call the court app method startup, which will run the before serving the created function, which in our app establishes the database connection. We then yield the app itself to the calling test. And once the tests are done, we do the shutdown method of the court app, which calls the after serving function in our application PY. One thing I want you to notice, in the instantiation of the create app, we are passing the create DB fixture return with a double asterisk in front of it. The way this works is that the create DB fixture is returning a dictionary of variables which line up with our settings variables. Remember how create app takes overrides as a parameter? This is exactly why, so that we can instantiate test apps with different configuration settings. The double asterisk in Python essentially passes the variables returned by CreateDB as a keyword argument list. So it's the same as writing the following. We're almost there. We'll create our last fixture, which will allow us to create a test client that we can use to hit the endpoints. This looks like this. We will inject the create test app fixture from above. Yes, that means we're already at two fixture levels from the first fixture in the file, but this is the only fixture we will need in our tests, so we're good. I just want to highlight how cool fixtures are. We can now just include create test client in each test, and that will automatically create the database using the create DB fixture and create the test application using the create test app fixture. We don't need to yield anything in this case since we don't need to run any cleanups after the test is done. Save the file. Now let's create our actual test. Create a file called test counter inside the counter folder. Any file that starts with the word test underscore will be automatically discovered by PyTest. For our first test, we want to be able to see that the counter is started when we first hit the page. We need to decorate it as an async test, since we'll be doing I.O. operations. We'll also need the create test client fixture, which will be setting up the test client and its dependencies. We then hit the test client with a request and await for the response. The data we get back is stored in the body variable, and then check that the string counter equals one is in the body. Save the file and run the test using poetry run pytest. Make sure you're running your Docker Postgres container. It fails. What's the problem? The issue here is that we don't have the counter model referenced anywhere. And when the create all method is called on line 56 of the conf test py file, there are no references to any models to be created. So on line three of the test counter py file, add the following. Save the file and run the test again. 